money is a great way of keeping score uh, money is uh, how the world runs he was born rich you were it come on sir please you tell me how do you get me a car i know he got rich because you did something hanky panky and yeah. cut corners along the yeah, way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. salesmanship the first is they should think that they are exactly the same as you so one thing that you have to learn while driving in katak is very simple that if you see a gap you just barge in <laughs> let's look for them and if you're not looking for them let's look for them and if you're looking for them let's look more for them it's just the execution around it fire in the belly gratitude in the heart and curiosity in the mind welcome to the baba shop ashish um i think <clears throat> the reason we started the baba shop uh was fundamentally um uh, if we take a long view of of the country right um and from an entrepreneur entrepreneurial lens we believe that the next 20 years is where um we we have got all the things going for the country right we have a stable government it, independent of you know which which party Finally. and so on yeah. we have a stable government we have safe borders we have a young demographic and we have an aspiring uh social uh, community which across cities multiple cities kind of going up people coming back from studying which was not happening before and i think india is at a, at the cusp of of going into the at the next level i think globally also people are recognizing it but one of the fundamental things that we we need to do is create enterprise at the core um and today for example we need to create a million jobs a month broadly we are kind of 20% there uh and that delta of employment deficit that we can currently face will only be solved if the 24 25 26 year old graduating from college entering into their first job is very asp- aspiring see is seeing the world has access to information becomes entrepreneurial not an entrepreneur i don't mean that in has to build a unicorn we see backed or you know any just has to be entrepreneurial um and <clears throat> needs to be able to create value. employment and value through i mean from a preserving wealth versus value creation we are in the latter part for for some time right and this conversation is to talk to people like you who have done it at a, f- at a phenomenal scale and humanize that journey a little bit right uh because what happens in india broadly is you we tend to make very successful people superstars and gods and then we do that whether it's amitabh bachchan or sachin or whatever right? sachin and bini bansal for example for a while you tend to ignore all the things that go behind the journey and right. if we don't learn from that we can never really do what and it then becomes unreachable so the point is uh, of of the barber shop is to 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 humanize to to create positive uh, inspiration and to really make it very real uh, as to what this journey is about so thank you ashish uh, for coming and a quick introduction to ashish uh, uh, doesn't need one but founder of off business um uh, one of the uh, unicorn amongst unicorns right because one is of course unicorn is an uh, is, a, is is like this mythical being but a high growth profitable unicorn is a mythical unicorn in itself right so uh, wanted to know more about the uh, about the journey and uh, in one of the podcasts uh, you had said that uh, i was not happy with just creating holes or dents i wanted to create a crater uh and given where you were at that time you, know, you had just a phenomenal pedigree from being part of multiple institutions academically and where you were working um just tell us about why that why were you in that still dissatisfied mode uh, where you had to kind of you know swing for the fences you still wanted to do that so firstly uh, thank you for having me and uh, great to be a part of a noble effort i first uh, remember uh, hearing about creating jobs in my early economics classes it's a uh, it's a good effort to actually get there and if i think both of us can add to that endeavor it will be a great uh, journey in itself so um, so if your question was that uh, why was it a dent frankly um, i think a lot of choices that i did whether it was in the academic life or professional life was largely dictated by what was happening around me and what was the best thing that one could do just out of you know uh, what what one was doing so if we were doing engineering it was always good to get into a good job um which paid well and which was known to like the masses from from that you do an mba from an mba you get to a consulting kind of a organization and from there you kind of do vc and stuff like that i i always followed the deemed path and then it one day dawned to me that hey 
whatever I was doing was I was probably doing very well for myself. But the reality is that I was not having impact beyond what uh, you know what was probably accruing to me in my bank account or or just feeling happy about it and having a very comfortable life and all that. And and it took me a while to realize that this is not who I was. This is not how I grew up. This is not who I wanted to be. And in that moment, this thought came. I, I remember saying this uh, the first time around when uh, when I actually thought of leaving, and I said it to my boss then that what I'm doing is just a dent because I'm doing what you tell me to do. Um, I'm doing what is already in the manual. I probably do it better than others, but the reality is that I'm not creating anything. Uh, and if even if I want to create, I don't really have the freedom to create it, right? So, so I think that both the environment as well as this thought process of saying, let me change that environment is actually what forced me to look at something entrepreneurial. That's not who I was, by the way, because if you look at how I grew up uh, from where I was, uh, it took a monumental effort to get into that straight jacketed uh, academic and professional life. So, so yeah, so those kind of things got added up. I was probably in my mid thirties and I said, better late than never. This is probably the last time I can do it. And hence I jumped. Wow. Give us a sense of what off business has become. It's, uh, to be honest, it's, uh, it's not the sexiest business, yeah. right? It is. We didn't it want is, it uh, like that. Huh, you, you, you correlate unsexiness with success in a way, right? So yeah. explain that a little bit. Like wh why choose something that is, uh, uh, that, that is raw material, steel, you know, uh, was that the kind of work you did during investing or during consulting? A little bit, but reality is, see, I'll tell you when I was growing up, uh, my, I was obsessed with money. I thought that was the currency around which uh, everything was measured, right? Uh, though I had nothing to do with money, my, my uh, parents, both sides were academicians. Uh, but I was obsessed with this thought that, hey, you know what? Money is a great way of keeping score. Uh, money is uh, how the world runs. Um, countries get evaluated on money. I think uh, families get evaluated on money and stuff like that. And then I, I kind of got obsessed with the fact that one has to make uh, one being a party or an institution or an individual has to make a lot of money to actually become successful, right? So, and from that, I realized that one of the key ways in which you can make a lot of money is if you don't get copied. Because if you're doing something very well, somebody will copy you and you know just, just get lost. And the, in my growing up years, I kind of correlated it with the thought of saying that, hey, what cannot be copied is what people don't generally think about. So for example, if you are doing a food tech startup, everybody eats food and thinks about, hey, what are the new things that can happen to food, right? But if you think about steel, for example, right? and you look at uh, yourself, you probably know nothing about steel. Uh, you may have seen it, you may have read about it, but it's very, it's, it's not intuitive. I would not call it non-glamorous, but the way I think about it is, is do something which doesn't come to the normal human being when he is doing his or her own work, right? So as long as it is non-intuitive, more people who are not thinking about it, if they're not thinking about it, it likely won't get copied. So that's the thought which actually uh, provoked me to do uh, things that uh, that we do in off business we said okay let's do stuff that the common man does not think so for example after steel we got into aluminium nobody knows aluminium after aluminium we got into industrial chemicals uh, i remember uh, somebody say, saying that we started off with chlorine in, industri in industrial chemicals and somebody told me hey everybody knows chlorine and the question that i asked him is chlorine is it is it a gas or a liquid the guy couldn't answer it so so anything that is non intuitive anything that people don't think about tends to be unglamorous as well but that's i think that's where the you know the defensibility kind of uh, exists you talk about profit pools a lot and i think that's a like that's just a fantastic way to think about building business and at the very core i think the purpose of business is to make profit to be very honest is to make money we haven't been able to do it right at bombay shaving company we still struggle we uh, uh, we justify it but do you think about it oh all the time do you aspire to... Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We have a margin profile that is quite astounding as most personal care businesses do. At the moment you build a brand, you're able to charge a premium, your price comp your price decompresses significantly and then you have a tremendous cushion. Mm. Now, that cushion mm. is illusory in a lot of ways. Right? You can mm. say, I'm going to deploy this as marketing and mm. then cost becomes investment. Mm. And then returns become very, like it becomes very gray area. So mm. for, and which is what is happening with a lot of personal brand, personal care, but any consumer brands that are being built out in India, I mean, margin profiles at the unit level are very, very good. 75% mm. when, where, where taxes are kind of uh, lower, but growth marketing becomes a problem. But for you, like when you're saying you're absolutely right. I met a friend the other day, uh, he runs India's largest uh, business 
to construct swimming pools hmm. for hotels and homes and colonies right and i'm sure he makes a lot of money he makes a ton, ton of money and yeah. i he gave me just looking at his house and all it looks like they do very well for themselves but it would have never occurred to me that that's that there is a value pool there but talk about this approach to cuz i think off business is pivoted a, like I, i remember talking to dhanesh and he said that the way ashish the initial thesis then moving to b2b commerce then now moving to lending um and of course you kind of done mini changes and just kind of moved the organization in that direction despite having been having actually doing very well you were always like someone who always hit targets and you 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 have that reputation as a founder and as a company but talk about that a little bit like what was your in going thesis what have you transformed into and and how did you make those changes so my view shantanu always has been so i'll tell you how i grew up around this thesis right so i am from katak which is like a tier 3 town but 1000 years old it has very it's see bitsy tiny mini gullies that you have to drive through and all that so one thing that you have to learn while driving in katak is very simple that if you see a gap you just barge in <laughs> otherwise you won't i mean if you're looking for that left hand side the guy to slow down and the guy to let you go it won't happen in katak right so like in most cities calcutta being another example or any age old city being so my belief is as long as you're driving and your focus is on the road you will always see a big gap okay and it will come somewhere there right as long as you're looking for it you will just barge in so my belief has been that you know whether it is in academics whether it is in entrepreneurial journeys you have to just keep focus my my focus is very simple first you have to make money which is profitability second you have to build a great business which which for me fundamentally is a clean business because i think in india people do a lot of jugad and they take corporate governance for granted they take statutes for granted and, say, and stuff like that so second is build a clean business because otherwise one day you'll fall down and third is you look at growth yeah. and that's a great business for me right so as long as i'm focused on those three things and i'm just going i i believe that i will always see that gap which will force me to barge in so when we started i to be very honest i actually started off with healthcare because that's the background that i came from I but the moment i actually got into healthcare i realized that the money is not in selling those healthcare devices or the healthcare products but is actually in the raw material that creates them so we got into raw material when we got into raw material we realized hey you know what uh, difficult to make money in raw material uh, or maybe you'll make raw material uh, money in raw material at a much larger scale but there's money in lending so we got into lending it was very associated right and while we were going on lending we said okay what uh, you know what if we actually get into syndication it makes a lot of money we got into syndication so as long as you don't quit what you were starting with and you look for with some basic values like the three that i have and you see that gap in the road and you just barge in you'll get there that's our belief i mean that's my fundamental belief because i mean frankly it's not necessarily a pivot because you're not discontinuing what you are al- already doing but whatever opportunity you get if you actually just go and grab it it's the best way of doing business but you make it sound very easy i'm assuming the fundamental no it's not easy at all ha the fundamental intrinsics of organization in terms of skills dna have to change when you're lending versus when you're doing oh, healthcare oh yeah for you? that uh, shantanu so first of all it's not easy i'll tell you why because most people around you will tell you that's the wrong thing to do so for example they'll tell you hey why do a new thing when that's working very well mm. but the reality is if you don't do this you won't last there any which way right the second thing people will tell you uh, like in hindi we say aage daud piche chhod ho jayega you know if you start <laughs> doing something new you can't do that and stuff like that right so my basic belief is you need to have a lot of people a lot of people who are very similar to you okay and fundamentally the way to find these new people is very very simple we just hire freshers and in freshers we just look for two or three things you won't believe it we are a team of now about close to 1400 people wow out of 1400 only 50 people are in their second jobs or later their first jobs was 1350 out of 1400 first job is our business so what do i get there i get a guy who is very malleable who likes listening to me and wants to be like me or wants to listen to somebody who is like me right so by by doing that we've created a very cohesive value set which is getting acquired over a period of time and is becoming much more stereotyped and then they also believe like that right and hence it becomes easier i think the only way to break it is if you are not an individual on that mission but you are a team on that mission and the team has those set of shared values that you really really look for two things come to mind when you talk about that right one is <clears throat> you i think freshers are absolutely malleable super high on you do the same why why do you do it we we don't in, index that much on freshers it's probably 40 60 
the thing is with freshers you get you get a sort very very clear pros i agree with you there's energy there's a desire very malleable they they fit into the organization very quickly um however there is a significant overhead of training and and making them productive especially in um functions like operations sales etc where you want them to quickly start becoming productive where you you have numbers to go after and so on and hiring managers or pnl owners very quickly will say okay you know what i i don't i don't want to teach this skill i want the skill of the market but because okay. you want him to catch the ground running 100% and to teach us many times we hire people who come in as bosses of people and they have spent 15 years building a distribution in a particular area have the 20 relationships that are needed which we don't have in the company so for us sometimes lateral hires make a lot of sense but you are right in freshers also i think the the the, the ability to coach uh and the ability to make them cohesive will depend significantly on 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 your hiring like you need to bring in people who are in, intrinsically very similar so what are those values that you look for like uh, how do you bring in freshers who are who account for 95% of your of your of your workforce uh, and still have like a homogeneity which 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 i think works for you so we well. look for these three four things from the very beginning so the first thing that we look for uh, shantanu is uh, is whether the guy has a commercial instinct does he understand value for money he may not be from a business family that's not really necessary but if he has an instinct to do right by money because fundamentally i believe in businesses particularly like ours you are playing with money right yeah. so you should not gamble you should understand the value of money so you can actually talk about and in a conversation you can get a sense right with the way they dress, the guy dresses up does he bring money up front and stuff like that so we look for commercial instinct or at least a basic appreciation for the fact that commercial values are important right so that's one second thing that we look for is a lot of hunger there are fundamentally a few guys who you you know kind of you when you hear them they may do it in very different ways but they'll tell you life mein kuch karega boss right uh, you will get there you get that feel when you talk to a few people right it, it can be just across the road as well so so we look for that and i think over a period of time we've got trained to seeing okay these traits kind of point you to the direction of saying okay this guy will do it better right so that's second hunger or the fact that he'll get there the third very important thing that we look for is somebody who's like middle class or lower middle class who really really has not had it in life who's not had it easy you know, maybe from a tier two town maybe from you know a early parental death or whatever so some stuff like that who's not had it easy i think because in the business that we are in we are a startup facing like multiple uh, businesses both as customers and as well as suppliers which are larger than ours right so so one has to fight so the fact that he has actually fought earlier in life is very important for us that's the third thing that we always look for and the fourth thing that we look for is communication flair so if he speaks i would love to listen to him right because in india my fun- fundamental belief is that it's a very you know it's a very speaking kind of country right while people like to read a lot more these days they will like they will still want to you know go out hang around this communication flair right people may do it by the fact that they have a lot of knowledge people may weave stories people are very structured for example right but whatever communication flair is what we look for so these four things you will actually find it even in our housekeeping boy because even he is a fresher wow so because we look for that guy because fundamentally our belief is that if he does his job well he will probably become a part of the operations team wow. right like you won't believe it but our hr head was a was a customer services executive to join with Uh, and he was just a call center executive right so so and he was a fresher too so uh, so that's my belief that as long as these shared values are there um which you actually uh, you know are always looking for that's a necessary criteria of being uh, of being a part of what you're doing uh and everything else is malleable around it uh, it's a great concoction and we believe that you know while they may not catch the ground running to your point it's an investment that we are uh, ready to do and that's because we want to be hands on ourselves like i was telling you just yeah. before this conversation you know, all of us are hands on like i remember one of your um, colleagues deepak telling me that ruchi actually by yeah. way better half in personal and professional <laughs> life ca- calling him to utilize the limits right so um, i i do the same and frankly that is to compensate for the fact that some people are not catching the ground running and we are investing in them so so that's the thought that there's we i mean your shared values could be very different i i i saw a lot of bombay shaving company today and i think um there are shared values as well so yeah. but we look for them actively i think it's more the execution of saying that hey 
now we know what to look for but let's look for them and if you're not looking for them let's look for them and if you're looking for them let's look more for them it's just the execution around it and making sure that everybody who's kind of interviewing either in campus or off campus or whatever that stuff is is looking for them and looking for the exact four things and is getting better at looking for them it's just the execution around it right so make it real for us ashish a little bit right um and especially on your third point around finding people with scarcity in their lives before who not had it easy yeah. right um and i agree with that by the way i think it's just uh, that's what they say right fire in the belly gratitude in the heart and curiosity in the mind like if you have these three yeah. um there is a there is there is magic you can create if you are put in the right in the right direction and incentivized right and it's absolutely but make this real for us in terms of success for your people you spoke a little bit about a customer service executive becoming the hr head which is like 15 years of career probably condensed into two or three yeah uh but do you find that happening consistently across as it you need to like for example in mckinsey you you, have, you used to recruit very well and have a lot of opportunity but led to a lot of people leaving because obviously the same like incentives by definition means some people get them and some people don't and especially given that it's their first job um you know they will obviously have opportunities outside i know for a fact that people who have worked it off business are in tremendous demand in the market just because of the kind of intrinsic that you coach them with but make it real for us as in how 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 do you deal with with how do you work? deal with attrition yes attrition and just working with let me let me break this into two parts right one is attrition uh and coupled that with managing success for some part of your organization that is disproportionately performing um and the second part is just looking at people your alums also or even current of 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 beans uh there is a cult right they are very young people very impressionable very very young. right yeah. and they will look at you as you know unicorn founder right? again kind of um you become larger than life for them a lot and does that lead to it could lead to a certain camaraderie and love that that person will always be protect alternately it could lead to uh, it could lead to a, sh- a complete shell where that person does not see outside or does not understand the world outside of business and is might not be the we best have prepared. more people of the latin kind ha huh. so like, like talk talk more about that a little bit so to your first point i think at- attrition so so i'll tell you about mckinsey because you mentioned it right in mckinsey we have a similar kind of a structure wherein there is a great camaraderie with people who are in and around you and at the same time it's extremely meritocratic it's almost a rat race with uh, with uh, the best guy winning and the worst guy probably getting counseled out as they yeah. used to call it right so so we have that but what we have in addition to what mckinsey did not have or for that matter any uh, other top tier firm did not have is that at a very early stage we did not partake in the company's growth and at the same time the company was likely not growing so as long as we are together delivering value as a company and we are making sure that people are partaking in it and we are making sure at the same time that they are liquidating and seeing that value what happens is a lot of that rat race ability actually gets lost and hence you deal with attrition at two levels of saying that hey you may be good and hence you will rise but even if you are average you will rise with the company now when i was a part of mckinsey it was told to me that if i spent 7 years in mckinsey or if i'm outstanding probably 6 and a half years in mckinsey before i actually um, get a, a share of company's profits so i was not partaking in the company's growth and when i was and when i was talking to people around me i did not know whether mckinsey was growing right i had this belief that i was a good guy and hence i will likely grow but i was not partaking in the company's growth and i did not have a sense that the company was growing what we've done here is we've made sure that while an individual has to run fast to win his own race with his own colleagues and uh, uh, comrades around him but at the same time the whole unit is also growing at the same time he is getting a share of that whether it is in esops whether it is in bonuses but at the same time there is a forced liquidation so what we make sure is that if a guy has had some esops and has one year of having those esops he has to liquidate at least 10 to 20% if there's nobody buying it i'll buy it wow we force it we force it so so that he gets it right and once once he sees it in his hand he actually sees a lot of you know of what initial wealth he has created and ascribes it to the company so for example i we were doing a survey we found out 70% of our people actually funded their first cars 
with ESOP money. Wow. Almost everybody owns a car in our business. Everybody has ESOPs. Second, we, we realized that close to about 34% of our people actually bought off their first houses with uh, of business ESOPs. Well, they were freshers, right? They all needed a house to stay in. And about 18% of the people actually got married and funded it with ESOPs. So the reality is once they see that, what do they know? They know that they have to win their own race. So there is a meritocratic culture at one hand, but at the other end, they know that the company is growing. They have a share of it and they can see it. So as long as you can create that atmosphere, right, wherein that meritocracy is actually, you know, combined with that, you know, the entire pool growing, you never lose the guy. So that's the point on attrition. And I think to force the fact, and that creates almost a Jekyll and Hyde kind of a, a atmosphere in almost everyone, wherein he says that, hey, you know what, I have to force this camaraderie because I, unless we do that, the company won't grow. And I won't make that much money and I'll probably not fund my own house. But at the same time, he knows he has to be meritocratic too. So that dichotomy to be forced in an individual according to me is something that we've done it with design. I actually saw it in ITC, for example, the other institution that I worked in, wherein my boss told me very clearly that, boss, you can win your own race, but at the end of the day, if you don't force your camaraderie, if we don't all grow, to grow together, we'll likely not win the race as a whole and hence your share will be very less, right? So I think that dichotomy of saying that we have to collectively and cohesively actually win the race together while also trying to win my own individual race is something that I learned very early in my professional journey and I wanted to duplicate that, right? You won't believe it that in my seed round, okay, I wanted to duplicate some ESOP still, I figured out that there is cliff and some law that is preventing it. <laughs> And so straight, yeah. so straight after a year, we, we ended up uh, liquidating 10% of uh, our ESOPs in our Series B, a year into our starting. Because I thought, I, as I said, that's my, that's my whole philosophy of doing something, right? So that's around attrition. And I believe that one of the ways in which you can control attrition is to force camaraderie. Everybody talks about camaraderie, but how do you force camaraderie? Like, for example, the other thing I invented about two, three years back was very interesting. I kind of... Uh, uh, was seeing this uh, tennis match between between a few, uh, I mean, uh, a, a double pair, and somebody said ABC, which is Amrit Raj Bog and Connors, and it just struck me that hey, you know what? We also have something uh, which is ABC in our uh, uh, in our company, which is altruism, brotherhood, and camaraderie. So we made it the ABC of of business. And if you go to our businesses, any office, you'll see ABC posted all over. So so what are you doing? You're forcing camaraderie because you are priming everybody. The moment he enters and he sees ABC, it's ABC, it's ABC, altruism, brotherhood, camaraderie. So you're just forcing him, right? So at one end, you're making him run and win the race. But at the same time, you're telling him, hey, that the atmosphere is such, whether it's money in your wallet or the or the poster in front of you, it's forcing you to do comedy. So you have to, you, know, you don't have to balance both. You just have to like the Katak thing. You just barge both of them in. Uh, somebody is more of the latter. Somebody is more of the former. But everybody has both. Double click on this for me a little bit. Right? In terms of liquidation. Like make this, make this, uh, make this colorful for a 24 year old or 23 year old entering off business and is a high performer. Um, in your sales team, for example, is fabulous with clients. Is able to. We are all sales guys, by the way. So. Is fabulous. Uh, in terms of converting, holding, and the thing with lending businesses, like and like, I was just thinking about it today. The moment I sell my shaving cream or I sell a razor, my eighty percent of my business is done, right? Because now the product has to now the product has to deliver, and at, at best, if someone has to reach out for how can I use this better or whatever, that's the only role the company or the brand plays. But in a lending business, that's where the the relationship starts. Because then there is part of the business, you, there is collecting it back, there is then the next, uh, you know, how do you go from one to two and all of that, right? So, uh, for a 24-year-old who is doing extremely well, um, what, just tell me numbers, like how much would they earn through ESOPs or just break this into revenue and capital for me? Like what's income and what's, what's, what's wealth uh, at the two-year, three-year, four-year, six-year? Yeah. So, I'll tell you the math that we tell people. So the math that we tell people and we, I think at least in our initial, uh, I mean we are about close to six years of our journey right now, I think in the initial five years we definitely over delivered on it. What we tell them is very simple that hey, you come in with a, with a salary of X, with a, with a capital base of ESOPs of about 4X. Mm -hmm. If the company at a very minimum has grown 2X, what happens is your 1X, if you're doing very well, 1X goes to 1.25X, okay. but your 4X likely becomes 8X. Okay assume another 2x and assume that the guy has got another 25% hike because he was very good but 1.25 is now 1.5625 1. 
right? And the 8x is now a 16x, but the reality is when he was 8x, he gets another allotment because our, for us, ESOPs are annual allotments, right? So he gets another 4x there. Or if he's done very well and the 4 math holds, then he's got 5x there, right? So if you actually take a 5-year horizon, you are likely made close to about a 7 to 7.5x of salary, but likely made about a 100x in terms of value that you're sitting as, as an asset, which is a 15 times income. So, and that is why you, what you will see... 15 times 5-year income. Not 15 really. times 5-year income. Then that is why you see that most of the assets that they bought. What I, what did I tell you? I told you that they buy their first car, their first house, their first wedding. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, all these are assets. So, what we tell them is that you will make, you will buy what your parents did at the fag end of their career, in the beginning of your career. Just imagine what your dad would do in the last five years of his 40-year-old okay. professional career. You would do that in your first four years or maybe five years. right? So that's the kind of promise we make. The, but the problem is not the promise. The problem, I mean, the solution is not the promise. The solution is in the execution of it. Yes. Is to actually find out how many, for how many people did you actually deliver to that promise. And to measure it. And to critically hold yourself to it. And making sure that for other people who you didn't deliver to it, you actually make sure that you tell them that, hey, this is the reason why I couldn't deliver it for you and this is why you are at fault. That's the only performance management that we do during the course of the year. Because that this math that I told you is exactly the math that we promise on every single campus. And we go and tell them, hey, you know, the reason why the, you did not get a four times your current salary is because of these three reasons. Please solve it for yourself. But at the same time, if the company has not delivered 2x, I'm also I'm at, at fault too and hence I need to uh, do a few things for you, right? So to actually make sure that, see, the concept is great. I'm sure you'll come up with a concept which is great for Bombay Shaving Company too. But actually to make sure that you deliver to it, you execute to it and you hold yourself by it and making sure that you, you know, if you, if you fault at it, you actually call it a blunder and not a mistake yeah. is, is what I think defines the great from the good. It's right? character. It's character. It's character, right? You made a promise on campus. See, when you're talking on campus with all freshers around you, whatever you say, they will say, hey, well, great. By the end of it, well, if you take it and say that, hey, this is what I have to hold myself by, okay? And I have to make sure that if I don't, you know, kind of meet the standards that I gave it in my speech, right, um, uh, is what I will measure myself by, is, is something that I think one should always do. And that execution is what separates uh, the good from the great. That's incredible. I was just kind of doing the math in my head. Um, for an engineering or an undergraduate... Uh, you we know, don't take engineering guys. We only take MBA grads. BCom or MBA or whatever, right? Mm. If you start at a 15 lakhs, for mm. example, you're basically saying that 15 lakhs will become 75 lakhs in terms of salary. Uh, by by year five, and that's actually inconsequential, to be honest, in the larger scheme of things. Let's say it's a it's a ninety lakhs or one crore. Ninety lakhs to one crore, right? But at the five year point, you're saying then then at that point have a 15, thirteen to seventeen crore net net kitty in the Easy. bank, Easy. Right? or at least an off business li liquid as shares. asset value. As asset value, yes. That which is, which by the way, they would have liquidated at least twenty percent of it each single year. 20% of what is they're holding. No, uh, of their... Uh, of, the net, of the net five years. Yes. We force them to. If, and if they want to do more? As enough. long as it is vested, we accelerate for a few uh, people as well. They have some... Content. That's incredible, man. And do you, I don't think that is common, by the way, by any stretch of imagination. In fact, I think, I think Indian founders are getting to it uh, in terms of sharing wealth. Uh, uh, but we are nowhere close. Uh, we see people's shares uh, uh, lapse once they leave the company. We see um, uh, we see vesting, which is becoming more and more onerous. Uh, we don't see liquidation. In fact, I think the biggest thing is I don't think we see liquidation promises. Even we are not able to do it. We try our best. Every last three funding rounds, we have done liquidation for ESOP holders up to 30%. And whatever was the subscription value, we have, I think, managed to get 50-60% of the offer subscribed. People didn't want to sell more. So we have tried our best, but I don't know whether we can commit to doing it every year or whether we have the capital to buy it back or the gumption to buy it back if things are low. So I think just But if it amazing. is one of the first things that you measure yourself by, you'll likely do it. According to me, our basic motto of team management is to make sure, because I wanted to make money for myself. My basic motto of team management, have I made enough money for you that you actually can be happy? 
and you come back to work saying that hey this guy fulfilled his promise now let me just promise something to him and over deliver so, so i measure myself by that i mean, i think almost every top manager in our business kind of measures himself by that wow. they would probably not say it in as many words they aren't in this great podcast with you but the reality <laughs> is uh, that's how careers are made that's how good happy people are made tell me i how, i want to i want to go a little deeper in this with you right and you you seem to be a very honest and you seem to have thought it through fairly well right as you went from iit to itc to isb to mckinsey to matrix right you you worked at hallowed institutions with tremendous salaries and tremendous growth paths and carry and partner bonuses and ruchi was a partner at mckinsey so you kind of seen it happen in the house and so on right but did your goal post for money which is i agree with you it is the currency and rohit it's a way of keeping score at the very minimum and and rohit said this very nicely the other day he said it's not about what you do with the wealth it's about the fact that people know you have it you know that that's where access comes in influence comes in that wealth is not about spending it to make it useful it is about having it and letting people know you have it so that it become useful things just fall in place for you right but i feel the best part of wealth is when you have created it when you know that you've created wealth not just for yourself it's very easy to create it for yourself we created it for others say more like tell me what like do you keep us i'm sure you do do you keep a what is your two questions what is your moving goal post as you went through your career on how much money you need to make to say you're financially free and today when you look at an incoming mba grad or business today and you say yeah i want to make this guy successful man money wise do you have a number ki boss if i make this much for him then or her no i don't have a number see it's very i am a very vivid kind of a guy right? i used to paint i like poetry i'm a <laughs> sketch guy and all that so i actually see it in the face see according to me when i see the guy and i see the gadget he wears the accessories he wears um the kind of stuff that he talks about i know that he's gone up the social ladder and going up the social ladder is not just about wealth wealth is the first point of it second is easy having fun at work too so it's a concoction of many things but i think i measure it more in terms of saying that hey i have this 100 people around me okay are they going up the social ladder so if he was not driving a car he had a bike when he joined in has he bought a car i but know the we would do that to the great salary also no like disproportionate wealth is happening sooner maybe right? sooner maybe uh, a better one maybe a one that he can flash around maybe a one that he actually puts it up on facebook maybe and nobody puts a 800 or an alto <laughs> or a wagonar on facebook right uh, i mean by a beamer you put it up yeah so by a beamer you put it up yes so i think for me it sounds very materialistic but my honest opinion is that people don't just don't want to talk about it i think most people are materialist no oh, for sure we are also like at a values level right we were taught That's See, you said seventy-five percent. If you were not materialistic, you wouldn't say seventy-five percent. You'll say we make significant gross margin. But you said the number. Yeah. The reason you made said the number is materialistic at heart. If you're not materialistic, you won't run a company. Hundred percent. I think we are. I think we are unnecessarily shy about being enterprising, and it comes from the fact that we are a young country, and our value system taught us that wanting money is greedy. Yeah. Okay. Why do you want so much money? Why are you being greedy? don't spread your legs beyond what your blanket can afford yeah exactly it's a very strong saying in marathi right yeah. uh and there is i'm sure there is an odia version of it and yeah, hindi yeah, version yeah, of it there is there is there is thought that wanting more and more is bad it's sinful it's gluttony it's greed and and, 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 and the corollary of it is that if you've made it big it is because you've committed a lot of sins i think the corollary is the one which is, which is more worrying so if you've risen a lot in life they'll say hey you know what this guy actually cut a lot of corners yeah right they wouldn't credit you for the fact that you really worked very hard you made the right choices you probably uh, put in your capital at the right places and and stuff like that so i think as a country one part is people saying that hey you know what making too much is bad and that the, the end of it if you make too much they say that you did a lot of bad things yeah. i think it goes together right so i don't think like my fundamental grouse with india in terms of promoting entrepreneurship is i don't think people realize most people realize what is at stake for example uh, when people read that someone raised 500 crores of funding let's say right i don't think what 500 crores is is clear in people's minds for example my family like my family is middle class you know like on average monthly household income for a 35 year old cousin of mine 
will probably be a lakh and a half to 3 lakhs a month 20 lakhs a year right 20, yeah. 20 lakhs a year right for them 500 crores is just one number in a headline but to recognize that this is actually 50000 lakhs because that's where it become real 500 crores is treated as whatever about 60 70 million dollars 70 million no one really knows na ki 70 million hai kya 70, 70 million it, it, i don't even know what dollar conversion is like you don't do the maths but when you tell someone 50000 lakh rupees mere account mein ek in one shot i got an sms that says 50000 lakhs has entered my account which i can now deploy and i have given shares in my company for that money it suddenly becomes very real and i have seen people's eyes widen when they realize what like what that what is the scale of in pacho got to bahut hi chota like compared to what unicorns are raising and so on so and then what that means for you as a person as a founder what it means as an employee what it means as a shareholder what it means is lost on most people yeah. so the i just feel that relationship with money is something that we really need to start first of all cutting the crap around making it look bad yeah. and then encouraging people to take risks which we must as a country that is now going into this table but, but our generation is growing out of it i mean i am the older generation i'm saying, I'm saying your generation <laughs> yeah, is similar like uh, yeah. okay. himanshu and ashutosh are these guys but you know I, I don't know man like i still don't know like for example why do you think scams go on punished in india 5 lakh crore ka scam 2g3 whatever people like, there should be anarchy on the streets no if people really know what 5 lakh crore means they should they should be on the streets demanding it back as taxpayers we don't do it because we don't even know kya re number hai kya i think there is one side to that and i think the other side is people don't care because they think that that world is very different hmm. right so okay. for example okay. if i would have raised 500 crores my my dad would tell me uh, if he was in his true senses he would tell me <laughs> okay you are in a different world that's why you are doing <laughs> yeah. something different yeah. which i don't understand and hence i don't care and probably doesn't matter to me anymore is that fear or is that ignorance or is it just you know this not like what is it what is it? at the very core what is it but what prevents the common person from participating in this yeah, according to me is this lack of hunger i think fundamentally uh, we are a hungry nation at the core meaning that we don't have enough food but uh, i think it's just lack of hunger because i will tell you that i'm pretty sure it's the same for you when i see somebody doing something better than me i just want to match up and be better as well yeah. i think the common indian person when he sees something better than him he justifies to himself saying okay these are the reasons why he is kind of you know uh, doing things better than uh, what i can or what i should i think it's just that lack of inherent hunger and to to be honest i i personally think that the top decile of our country probably is very hungry but as an average i think the general hunger is very low that's what i have encountered decile is very generous by the way like i would like 1% i mean yeah. yeah very very hungry i mean I'm, i'm sure i i i heard you speak for about 10 minutes just prior to this conversation i thought you were very hungry right yeah uh, but i don't see it in the common man i think hunger to me is very very uh, innate to a person actually becoming better with almost every single passing period of minute right so uh, i see that missing i have seen people outside and i think just the average indian is not hungry enough it there's a, there's a variety of reasons for it but it doesn't matter it just has to be more hungry is, do we do we settle far too easily or have we been taught to settle get married early get a job get a car buy a house this is have kids at this age you know this is what is good for you i think settle is a little higher level if you take it one level down mm-hmm. settle i agree by the way i think the real reason is that we've been taught to justify so like for example i remember uh, i was from a middle class family right so if i would see rich guys in school and i would say hey mom you know what he's coming in a car i go in the school bus why don't i have a car okay. she'll say that you know what he was born rich you weren't I mean, that's the reason <laughs> you tell me how do you get me a car but yeah, he got rich because he did something hanky panky and yeah. cut corners along the yeah, way yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. he comes from a family wherein they tortured a lot of poor people and they stole their money <laughs> I, i don't care what the reason get me a car right so <laughs> to get to school i mean i'm sorry for that uh, example it's a real one by the way right so i used to come back from 
school i remember and, uh, and i used to see a lot of people with a big quality shop that i have that we had outside our uh, i mean the, outside the lane that we used to live in and people used to go and buy an ice cream and say mom i also want it every day she used to say that hey you know what you, I, i i don't want to spend that because i want to spend on your education and say, that you'll do anyways just get me that ice cream so yeah i think we are taught to reason very well i think we are good smart people we talk very well we kind of reason very fast see the way we are talking we are reasoning to each other we are reasoning if i see something in good i mean i love this painting i'll be honest with you i, I really liked it i really liked your logo by the way i want to develop a better logo i'm a hungry guy <laughs> i don't want to know that shantanu is a great creative brand person i don't care about it i saw a logo i want to do a thing better than that according to me that's hunger in india you justify you reason um, you find out uh, kind of answers to every problem you see a, you see a thing you want to do better i think that's missing in india despite having a very large business community right like you if we have like we have we have traders we are we are a service business right huh. to be honest i think in pockets uh, even through the 70s 80s 90s we saw tremendous enterprise like the it industry yeah. like what vishnu narayan murthy and fc kohli and uh, the mahindras did with it huh. was outstanding it and it was over a longer period of time than what we have seen with huh. more new age entrepreneurship right? right you see it in pockets yeah and by the way it was built by middle class india Mm. this is not rich inherited money that was kind of deployed and it was built by middle class india who decided that boss they're good programmers we can sell solutions to the world and we can we can make, make a lot of wealth and i think that created the post liberalization wave for wealth creation in india in a big way but you're right i mean it, you're right we just <laughs> we justify and compromise a lot outside these communities and unfortunately our value system is at conflict with making money in a lot of ways yeah if like i come from a state wherein if i go and say that you know what i own a house in delhi according to me which is which is almost very general you need to have a house anyways to stay in if i go and tell them i, I own a house in delhi they'll say ah bada ban gaya now he will ignore us now he won't talk to us he's not one of us anymore i don't know how he got there anyway this is damn young and stuff like that right? these kind of emotions come to people and that's the common man on the street how do you change that you change that by developing idols who speak about it openly who speak about it and say that that the reason why they are idols is because of the fact that they were different i think that's missing it's changing it's changing ever so slowly but it is changing and another thing right i think one of the biggest drivers of behavior whether people like to accept it or not is envy right you when you enter an aeroplane and you pass business class and you go and sit in your economy seat at some point you're like boss i need to go to the front of the plane and once you get there you never want to go back and the reason you you want to get there is because you're envious of the people who can afford a ticket which is worth five times more and sit in the seat which is twice of yours and can look at you when you pass them and you're like boss this is this doesn't work for me anymore and i remember at mckinsey i used to, if the team would travel as an associate i would kind of the partner would sit in the front and i would have to pass her or him and go to the back seat and it in some place even though i come from a very financially privileged background like i i've traveled business when i would go vacation with my parents and so on i i come from that kind of background it still hurt me kibos this doesn't fucking work this just doesn't work yeah that would make you great and once you get there you don't want to go like once you get there you're like boss i am never doing that again hmm. or once doing... you get there you find something new to actually yeah. cross over right yeah. so but tell me ashish like tell me about tell, tell me about finding like you had probably and i was talking to uh, i was talking to uh, revan bhatia at uh, mosaic and dhyanesh was there as a co-founder and it probably the best team um in the first six months like right like you i've heard that before i don't believe it but I no i mean just before, on yeah. paper i don't i, I don't yeah, on paper yes on paper like you from your tech to like just the kind of pedigree you got on board which is by the way very hard to do on a promise uh, especially in the first year or two where you are kind of figuring things out of course you are tracking to plan and you are you know of course growing and you have you have raised some money but they were there so before the plan was made right so exactly so then even pre plan how does someone how 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 do you how do you how do you get people together and then how do you stay out of each other's way because i'm you assuming want me to be honest how do you get in or how do you how do you keep them how, in how do you get them in and how do you stay out of each, each other's way because oh, yeah, that's a, questions, that's yeah. A, yeah you want me to be brutally honest yeah getting in is all about salesmanship it's all about salesmanship see salesmanship at the very core 
is not to develop like the conversation that we are having is not about salesmanship because it's about getting to know each other salesmanship is where you actually connect to him at a very basic level and you tell him hey you know what i am the exact same guy as you if you meet a guy and you connect with him at the very core you first you find out what his core is and you will have some element of yours that will match with that core you make that core almost connect to him so that he believes hey you know what like bhuvan was from udhampur yeah. he thought i was a delhiite he thought i was a jammuite <laughs> for example every guy who comes from odisha thinks i am from the next village same village that he is from i never tell that it's core cool. i mean it's very basic salesmanship the first is they should think that they are exactly the same as you or you are exactly the same as them so one is that a very basic level of connection they think alike they are probably from the same kind of people they have the same they have similar tastes they probably hang around with similar people and stuff like that right so one is that mm. the second part is to give them the confidence that hey you know what mai life mein kuch karunga and that they have to infer you can't go and tell them i'll be a great company no one no one believe you on the street even if you're a great guy they have to infer because they're smart guys yeah. right they have to infer that he will get somewhere in life how do you do that is a science in itself uh, we'll talk about it if you're interested but they have to believe that he'll get somewhere in life so that's the second part and the third part is that you know at a very basic level everybody wants to have fun fun right the moment you called me for this podcast yeah. you gave me this long spiel had you just asked me ha huh. hey will you come i would have said yes because i think you're a fun guy I have read a lot about you on what shows up on podcast. I just thought one hour with Santhanu will be good fun. Yeah, fun. Everybody wants to have fun. So according to me, the methodology that I use is first to connect with them at a very basic level. A very basic level is in terms of language, in terms of places that we come from, in terms of tastes that we have, in terms of what we like and stuff. So a very basic level. And second. and actually the third is the second which is that they'll have fun and the third is that hey i'll get somewhere in life you're having fun with me we are similar people why don't you come in man that's salesmanship for me that is when you're trying to build a team salesmanship to a customer is very different salesmanship to somebody an investor is very different according to me but to a partner who you will likely go to sleep with for at least the next 10 years or if not more yeah this is the methodology that i follow almost in that similar order and then how do you really get out of his way that's an art because there is always that inkling to say hey why don't i just go in and try to give two you know incremental inputs which i think are right to hold back that is very very critical i'll remind you you were going outside your uh, entire office you showed me a lot of stuff i never said anything yeah i was very quiet unlike the podcast that i have yeah. now i was very quiet it was very easy for me to tell you hey you do i have to do these two things these make very much <laughs> no i have to control myself when you are being yourself and i expect the same from you as well and i'm doing the same so so the fact is and it's very easy to figure out intrusive people are very easy to figure out if you're saying something and they try to build up on it too much you know that hey you know what tomorrow i'll do something you'll come up with two inputs right <laughs> i don't have that i truly believe that if there are some shared values and it's, there is something that he can do which i can't do and he's very good at it hmm. i have inherent respect so whatever you do you do if you search for me i'm there that's who i was my parents were like that they told me because i started business when i was like 13 they were academicians right what did you do when you were 13 i, I remember you told a story at our at our at our orientation many years ago pre covid pre covid yeah yeah i, I remember i, I, I feel so ashamed about it that i did that i actually don't talk about it too much these days <laughs> i sold a bit of chit funds and made some good money they were legal back then and good money to be made as right? a 13 year old 14 to be precise but we learned i mean we were sales guys when we were 13 14 and we made some money traded in a few commodities and stuff like that but it was in a place to like katak where nobody talks about money when nobody talks about being in business the worst of the class actually goes to business the marwadis who um, uh, who run all these shops or these massive retail outlets are the ones who actually can't study from that atmosphere where my parents were both iitians they were both academicians my mother was a professor my father was a scientist to do something I mean, they thought i was different they gave me that space wow and they never interfered they never thought that they could add value to my life so they stayed away and i think i, I learned something very basic from that which is that as long as i am similar they were odia so was i yeah. 
we lived in the same house we were same we were similar right we we connect at a very basic level which is language places the way we talk things we like yeah. and you have inherent respect for the other person you will inherently stay away so that's i mean, i got it so early in life that i thought hey you know what why not actually live it in my professional life as well very very basic thing right so so the first thing that i do when i want to create a teammate out of a person i like is to first find out a very basic thing which connects us and you should get it in the first 5 minutes if you don't then uh, then probably that doesn't i think that how do you do it you're pretty good at it as well no sir that there's something which which uh, no i agree with you like um, i think telling a story uh, so i think three four things number one is telling telling a common shared story that you and i are going to embark on this journey together yeah and if we both do well for each other um, i need to trust you you need to trust me but if we do well this is my job this is your job here is where i think magic land could be for both of us in real like real terms right uh, i do this with with in terms of what your post bombay shaving company what your career could look like right uh, what kind of money you will have in the bank account what skills you will learn yeah what i can add to your life here is what i'm really fucking but you get that in the first conversation you get that i have made up my mind about recruiting someone senior not junior senior you researched it already very in before i i have the chat mm. like before i have the chat i know that i want this person and then then i am a sales person in the interview even though it looks like an interview for me it is hey here is where we're going to be um the second thing is i think and this is this is something which i've heard right it is far easy to be a leader of pygmies than it is to be a leader of giants at being a leader of giants rick people who are older than you more experienced than you probably way smarter than you at at, at their chosen pursuit is extraordinarily difficult and i have like i have learned to it's taken a while for me to accept that for me to lead this will be will be tricky uh but i think the 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 where things become easy at a relationship level is when the other person becomes aware of my self awareness of that fact ki boss you are better than me at this i am explicitly clear about it i will not step in the way in fact please teach me what you know so that so and I'm how sorry. do you develop that confidence that you know that you will be true to your words you researched him he is likely not uh i think it takes some time like i think i think i think i think there is a courtship period uh which for, for all of our senior uh, senior folks there is a courtship period we built a so you built your leadership team very early on and then kind of added to it our leadership team has been built later on in our journey as a company right it's probably built been built more more recently uh so there was some context of what we have already built and what we want to take it to uh, there was some public profile there is i i write on linkedin um, a lot so there is stuff that i put publicly out there which is i have realized is uh, is very helpful because the moment you announce something publicly you can't take it back and then you are you are held to your word you because, beat it. yeah and you everyone holds you to to yeah. it at an accountability level which is which i had not realized by the way but the more you know the more you do it the more you do it. so um i think um but that that's that's what works right uh, and then of course after that i think is you're right consistency of execution on that promise uh, of course everything seems like rose tinted glasses for the first one month two months dating is when you date dating someone, is easy yeah. dating for the first two months is is a blind date is the easiest yeah, it's amazing right the sex is great you're already putting off uh, your best foot forward you're going to the best restaurant you're not living with each other you know you can just see the best in each other yeah i think month 6 month 12 is where reality hits and after that if the person still feels that there is consistency in promise then you know that you're in it for the long term and then you don't have to look back and and the other you know the other person trusts you right um and then but if you can't get on a date you can't get into a relationship <laughs> anyway so exactly. you need to so, go to dating anyway <laughs> completely right? so i think the process is important yeah. but uh, i think being honest is, is 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 works and you seem to be someone who uh who who is very vocal about and getting co-founders so many co-founders elevating co-founders we were seven to begin with tell me how how does equity work with seven co-founders it was very simple i mean i'll be honest with you the way it worked with with at least five out of those seven guys is they said uh, whatever you say is right so uh, i decided on saying that hey you know what uh, i live up to that promise so we actually distributed more equity as we went forward rather than the beginning one because was it was equal or were no no it was not equal to begin with okay. 
So the reality is when we got our first investment, there was just me and Ruchi uh, okay. and Bhuvan just joined in, right? So the capital was already made. Okay. So we kept giving more equities through either the ESOP pool or direct secondaries to all the other top management guys, which included the co-founders. So, but there was just blind belief. I mean, I think what I'm astounded by is the fact that nobody really questioned uh, because you had to live to that promise, right? Even if they didn't question the first year, they could have in the second year. But what they got at the end of the first year was way beyond their expectations. Oh, really? Right, yeah. That's that's the promise you have to live up to. The other side is, you know, where 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 people... I'm, I'm seeing a lot of companies elevate people to co-founders, blah, blah, blah. And uh, honestly, they put the, the ownership and the hard work and loyalty and put company first and, you know... Companies, everything, uh, Sunday night, 11 p.m., you know, if there is a fire, you need to be there. Like stuff which a regular employee may not respond to, but co-founders will. But at an equity level, the rewards may not be may not be there. But you're saying that if it is beyond expectation as a co-founder, if you're saying I get more equity than I would have thought, that's incredible. And not only for you and Ruchi. I think you and Ruchi, it's easy to do because, not easy, but it's easier to do because... You would have a line of sight to your own net worth. You would have a line of sight. You would, you would know exactly where office is heading. But, but more importantly, I'll tell you, we actually get into the families of the other guy. We actually get into his, uh, you know, entire being of who he is in the very, very first year of our existence. It's not true just for co-founders. It's true for most of our top management. We want to know him as a person, as a father, as a mother. What do we want to do? How much school fee? All of that. How much is it? What are their aspirations? What have they promised their parents? What have they promised? And stuff like that. I think expectation beating is not what you think you should do for him, but what he thinks he deserves for himself. If you beat that, that's amazing. That is but to actually have a good amount of understanding of what he thinks he deserves for himself needs you to actually really invest a lot of time other than work to understanding who the person is. And I can tell you that this is such a character, it's so, um, uh, you know, uh, it's so all pervasive that the moment you start doing it, almost everybody uh, starts doing it for their own teams. So, so you have, do you, do you take your ESOP pool and give parts of it to your manager, general managers? Yeah, team yeah. leaders, etc. To now, give you a sense, every you year we create at least a 2 to 2.5% of ESOP for the entire company. That is incredible. To be distributed in the same year, every single year. And that goes to anywhere between 50 to 70% of the workforce. 2% of a $5 billion business is $100 million. 5 was the last round. I mean, so between, between 30 to $100 million to be distributed the same year. Yeah. Every to single Your investors year. must be tremendous. Like, how do you get your investors? Because they make that much money, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you can distribute 2% if they've actually made their uh, own pound of flesh as well. You can't, I mean, unless you've delivered a return in excess of 25 to 3x, you can't expect them to create a pool of 2%, 2% yeah. to be distributed in that year. They may do it once in every two years. But the reality is you have to grow at that scale. Uh, I mean, to give you a sense, I think uh, our That's first incredible. investor who came in in uh, February 2016, which is when we had our first round, uh, shade of over six, or, uh, six years, is in the money by 143x. <laughs> wow. 143x. This is angel? Or this is like... Uh, this was the first, We never had an angel round. So we, our first institutional round had about uh, close to 40 angels. So... They came in along with the institutional law. And they've made 143 times of what they could have. As of now, yes. So if, I, if if someone had put in a crore, they're they are worth 143 crores? Yeah, you know a few of them, you should ask them. That's unbelievable. Because it grew. See, at the end of the day, what have you done? Fundamentally, what we've done, I mean, it sounds immodest, but the reality is we got into a business that nobody wants to be in. Why? Because it was unglamorous, it is not intuitive. Second thing that we did is that we enforced certain value systems of building teams of what we thought were the, were the right things to do and we executed well around it because we th thought execution was the only thing that matters. And the third, we believed in making money. I think all businesses have to kind of deliver to that promise at some point in time. We delivered it in our very first year because that's all that mattered to us. And the fourth is we were brutally honest about what we, like you write a LinkedIn post, so do I. I put up the MIS on, uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, you'll be brutally honest. Uh, at the end of the day, people there are some people who don't like it, but the ones who uh, like it are likely going to be a part of your journey. 
and the fourth which we don't talk about it is we are never in the press we don't want to be in the press and now, now we are i don't i, I think it's unavoidable right now but at least in the first 3 4 years of our journey nobody knew us and i remember one um, great comment that salman uh, khan made after the bang was he said that uh, guys who are uh, uh, all over the papers never been uh, never make a lot of money <laughs> he was i think the first guy to enter the 200 crore or the 500 crore yeah, yeah, club yeah. Yeah, and that's when he said that guys who are all over the papers are not the ones who are minting it at the back end. So uh, we want to be under the radar. I think it's a, it's a great uh, it's a, it's a great trait that uh, every individual should imbibe to just stay under the radar. So uh, that's one thing which was very very core to us. I don't uh, I'm not sure if it's the same with you. I think you have a business in which you have to be above the yes. radar. Uh, uh, we have the choice of uh, you know. Um, Uh, being under it, but uh, it's a very core value to uh, me as an individual and almost every single guy who's an OFPN. So, amazing. So yeah, uh, that that's what we did. It's very basic. I mean, frankly, is it easy? Uh, uh, I think it's difficult because it's just very easy to pull it off and to keep doing the same simple things all over a uh, period of time. It's just difficult. So uh, yeah, that's who we are. I got into a time at VC wherein about a couple of years into my journey, I knew that nothing was going to happen to me. That's, really that's the reality and if you made a two year business plan it's been gigo it's not made by somebody who really knows the business what is garbage in garbage out garbage in garbage out right my first round was uh, was a raise of 25 crores there 25 crore tere paas bank mein pada hai kaisi baatein kar raha choti choti baat all business heads we have something called tan man dhan ki baat which is modeled after narendra modi ji's man ki baat when i was a vc i became an entrepreneur for a very simple reason i thought i could be better than the guy i was funding